everybody! Welcome back to Stamp Cat Stamps! In the last two episodes, we've been looking at the stamps of Nova Scotia while exploring the city of Halifax and the town of Peggy's Cove. Today, we have one more day trip in store. We will be visiting the coastal town of Lunenburg with a quick stop at Mahone Bay. Both towns have shorelines lined with beautiful, colorful buildings boats anchored in the calm waters, and both have been featured on past issues of Canada's definitive stamps. We are in Lunenburg! We just got to Lunenburg. I'm just trying to get the right shot for this extreme philately. It's a view of the town from kind of across the bay a little bit. But look how beautiful it is! UNESCO World Heritage Site that has its origins as a fishing village. Even today, it is home to Canada's largest secondary fish processing plant. known for now is being the home of the famous fishing schooner, the Blue Nose. Ah, the iconic Blue Nose. Most Canadians will recognize the Blue Nose from our money. It's been featured on the Canadian dime since 1937, but stamp collectors will recognize the Blue Nose as one of the most famous and iconic Canadian stamps that has ever been issued. Consider it to be Canada's most beautiful stamp. And actually, it was even voted the most beautiful stamp in the world by readers of Stamp Magazine back in 1934. Here and there, you'll see the blue nose popping up everywhere with reference to Canadian philately. From our post office stamp packets, to international collections, and it was even featured in a movie, the 1988 film Tommy Tricker and the Stamp Traveler. Six mint blue noses. Perfect condition. Ho hold it, hold it, look. Another one. Fair warning, I think the movie is really weird. So what's the story behind this ship? How and why did it become such a Canadian icon? Let's delve into the history. In the 1920s along the East Coast, there was much hype about the America's Cup yacht races being held in New York. But when one of the big races was canceled due to strong wind conditions, the hardy fishermen crews of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia were laughing at this news. Their sturdy fishing boats went out all the time in much stronger winds than that. What if they could have a race between real sailing vessels instead of these delicate yachts? A race between actual hard-working boats, like the fishing schooners of the Atlantic. And so, it was settled. The International Fisherman's Race would take place for the first time in 1920. The prize? A trophy to be awarded to the fastest fishing schooner that worked in the North Atlantic deep sea fishing industry. By the way, they called it the International Fisherman's Race, but actually it was really just the communities of Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, and Gloucester, Massachusetts that competed. Preliminary races were held to see who among the Canadians would compete against the Americans. The very skilled captain Angus Walters was favored to win. Born and raised in Lunenburg, he began his career on fishing crews at the age of 14, working alongside his father, who himself was a captain of a fishing schooner. By the age of 23, Angus assumed control of his own crew, amassing 25 years of experience as a captain before the fisherman's race took place in 1920. 
Unfortunately, in the qualifying race, Walter's vessel broke under the speeds that he was pushing her to, and they lost the chance to compete in the race. And how even more embarrassing for the Lunenburg crews, when at the inaugural fisherman's race in Lunenburg, the American schooner Esperanto outpaced the Canadians in their own home waters and sailed away with the trophy. Angus Walters was sure that if he had a better built ship, he could win this race. Four Halifax businessmen, together with Angus Walters, requested William J. Rui, a marine architect, to design a sleek but sturdy, functional but fast ship. His design was his life's masterpiece, the Blue Nose. She was launched in March of 1921, enough time to get to work as a fishing schooner for one season before the qualification races in October. And there began her undefeated winning streak for 17 years. She was the undefeated champion from 1921 until 1938 when the last international fisherman's race was held. The whole time she was skippered by Captain Angus Walters and worked as a regular fishing schooner when not racing. She became dubbed as the Queen of the North Atlantic and did tours along the coast representing Canada at international events like the 1933 Chicago World's Fair and even overseas when she sailed to England in 1935 to represent Canada at the Silver Jubilee Celebration of King George V and Queen Mary. For all her glory as a champion racer and national symbol, the Blue Nose came to somewhat of a sad end in the 1940s. The fishing industry was declining, and the old school schooners were being replaced by engine-driven boats. As the Second World War settled in, there wasn't much money to be had by anyone. And despite Angus Walter's best efforts to keep his ship, she was eventually sold in 1942 to the West Indies Trading Company and served out the rest of her days working as a coastal freighter in the Caribbean, shipping bananas and other such cargo. In 1946, she struck a reef off the coast of Haiti and was abandoned and eventually sunk into the depths of the Caribbean Sea. tragic ending, Canadians did not forget the glory of our beloved Blue Nose. Her legacy is celebrated all over Lunenburg. And actually, it's more than just her memory that lingers there. So a lot of you guys know that the Blue Nose was both a racing and fishing schooner that sailed in the 1920s. What a lot of people don't know is they actually built a replica of the Blue Nose and it's called the Blue Nose 2 and it's sitting here behind me. It does sails around the province uh, and elsewhere too, but sometimes you can also go on board and have a look at what it looks like. This is far from perfect extreme philately, but also not too bad considering the original Blue Nose is in ruins at the bottom of the ocean. fun to see the Blue Nose 2 launch. Um, it's too bad everyone's waiting for them to put up the sails, but I think they don't do that until they leave the harbor, um, which is quite a ways out. So we didn't get to see it with the sails unfurled, but it's still a lot of fun just being here in Lunenburg, home of the Blue Nose. It's such a nice town, really cool vibes.
Wow, what a treat to get to explore the decks of the famous Blue Nose. As for the Blue Nose stamp, it was issued in 1929 at the height of her racing career. The design is a composite picture made from two photographs taken in 1922 by W.R. McCaskill, showing the Blue Nose from two different angles. The Blue Nose stamp has also been featured on several other stamps issued by Canada and worldwide. Since many of these are stamp-on stamps, they're featured prominently in my dad's topical stamp collection. Here we see the Blue Nose on Canadian stamp-on stamps, like this one issued in 1982 for the International Philatelic Youth Exhibition. Or this one, issued in 1998, showing William J. Rui, the Blue Nose Architect. The image of the Blue Nose has also been issued on a stamp in 1988 commemorating Captain Angus Walters. And just recently, in 2021, the 100th year anniversary of the launch of the Blue Nose. countries have also shown Blue Nose on their stamps in relation to popular topical collections like famous ships and the hobby of stamp collecting. the Blue Nose 2 has been a journey through history and I was so happy to get to walk on the decks of the ship that sailed its way not only to first place year after year but also into the hearts of Canadians. Even if it was just a replica of the ship, I hope you enjoyed learning about this famous schooner with me and exploring some of Nova Scotia through stamps. See you next time! Until then, stay safe and stay curious!